Hola, hola, hola. Ok. So, good morning, everybody. Uh, today we are going to, uh, well, thanks for coming. Uh, I'm going to try to explain you, uh, to, to make you understand a bit better what Git, how Git works. And yesterday there was a session with Roland uh, explaining the basics of Git. So uh, today I'm not going to try to explain how you should set up your repository or uh, the basic things of Git, uh, but I will try to explain. I will explain the uh, some concepts that I think that you need to know to understand how work how Git works. Um, I have two uh, blog posts about Git about the workflow that you should follow to set up your uh, Joomla to start contributing to Joomla or to any project. So if you need help. There is a lot of information. Uh, about me, uh, I'm a PHP JavaScript freelance. Uh, I'm developing with PHP since 2010. Uh, I love Joomla. I, am, I started to contribute to it in 2011. Uh, I'm in the top CMS contributor list, and I love open source. I use Linux. We are not a lot of people using Linux, so. We have to say it. And I use Git for everything. Uh, once you understand Git, I hope that you will use it. There is people that use Git for blogging, to write their blog post, uh, for almost everything, for documentation. Uh, already the wiki of, of GitHub work with Git. So it's a great tool. And now I'm a Gulp player. So, uh, fish all of us have a, a reason uh, about uh, of why we use git uh, most uh, a lot of people uh, use git because everybody knows git and it's the cool thing that you want to learn uh, another good reason is that your company wants you to use git so you are the the baby in the company and everybody's chasing you uh, if Git is a tool that your company requires, uh, you have to learn it. And uh, there are a lot of things that companies uh, ask you to learn, like uh, Slack or Basecamp or a lot of tools. And Git is one of that tools, of those tools that uh, will help you as a developer, not as a company developer, but it's a knowledge that will help you to be in any, in any company or for your own work. Uh, another good reason is that you need to collaborate. So uh, when you work alone, it's easy to don't track anything. You can do your own work. But when you need to collaborate with others, with others, uh, you can you have to learn how to don't break the the other uh, made work. Oh, you just want to be cool. So uh, it doesn't matter why you decided to learn Git, if it was because you wanted it or it was imposed, but Git will save you or it's a great tool that will save you or it should. And, uh, what I really want here is not explaining uh, commands or uh, tell you, you have to do this to, do, to achieve this. Uh, what I want you is to understand how Git works and Git is not something that you could learn uh, remembering things. Uh, it's not like history, or it's uh, something that uh, it's not something that you okay. I will remember these ten commands, these eleven commands. No, it's something that you ha have to understand. It's more like matrix or math. You have to uh, once you learn math, you don't have to remember everything. It's uh, you, you start thinking in a, in a different way. So I hope you start thinking in that way uh, or stop trying to memorize everything. And when, when we try to explain Git, uh, you will see, you, I'm sure you have seen this picture or something like that. Uh, it's not easy to understand how Git works with 
this image. Okay, I see nice dots, but what's that? Uh, Git merge, I see command there, but okay. Then let's forget it. I'm thinking in, this is a branch, or we are trying to explain what a branch is. I'm thinking in a branch, like a, a, a stack of commits, uh, a, a sheet stack, for example, and each commit has a different color, which will be the hash of the commit. So uh, it's like you have infinite colors. Uh, you cannot repeat colors. Each commit has a single color. And um, uh, I will explain it now. And uh, colors or commits are ordered in a specific way. So uh, the most on the, on the top of the, of the stack the commit is, the more newer is it. Uh, each of one, each of those commits contains files. So that's files that I have modified and uh, I have committed. So it's not just a, a, a stack of commits, but also each commit contains files. But first, let's try to make it simple. I'm thinking in a, in a stack of of commits. Okay. When you have a problem with Git, it's uh, uh, every time that I'm asked to help someone, uh, I see that it's not the, the real problem that they have now, but it's uh, some kind of bad practice or, or, okay, I did it wrong, and after that I did this, and after that I did this. So it's like problems that you can, if you can uh, limit uh, the, the size of the problem, uh, everything will be easier. To, to fix. So that is my recommendations for you. Uh, Git has a cool feature that is uh, Git aliases. You don't have to remember a command like this. Uh, so create your own Git aliases. For that, uh, on, on, Git, on Git, on GitHub Git, I have my own uh, aliases, which is those up here. You can search in my GitHub profile, my GIST, and these are the aliases that I use. Uh, so I don't have, for example, this is the uh, undo last, so to undo the, la the, the last commit. I don't have to remember this, which is easy, but I prefer to use git undo last, and it will revert, uh, undo my, my last commit. Uh, look, uh, this is for log, for example. It's not an easy command to remember, so just uh, git log, for example, uh, is something like that. When you are in a repository, oh, it's not seen. I will use a standard terminal. Okay, I will crash. The font size a bit. I hope you see it. That Git have a standard commands. That, for example, uh, uh, the best example is Git log. This is the uh, output of the Git log command. Uh, there is a lot of information there, and okay, you have uh, a log, and you have to scroll to see what happened. But if my alias, for example, the, the git l aliases, alias that you, you see here, what does is, oh, sorry. Is this. So it's the same information, but if you trick git to work uh, on your own way, uh, you can see there more, much more information. It's the, the commit message, when it was committed, and the author. If uh, this is a small repository, a demo repository that I have set up, but if we go to uh, uh, the Joomla CMS repository, it's a bit complex, but it's the same. So. Uh, what I want you to start thinking is that you can make your life easier. Just uh, putting everything in a 
in your own configuration in how this is my tool, this is my git, my custom command for git because I feel comfortable with that. So do it. It's okay. And there is a lot of people, a lot of pods of uh, git aliases there. So I'm sure you will find uh, what you want to. For example, in, in the there is author, for example, I have have a command that is to display the aliases themselves. So <laughs> if I want to know the contributors of Joomla, this is, I'm the only contributor here, but it's that kind of command that you can add. So, okay, git, uh, git aliases. You can also have a, a, a git works with config files. And each project, you, you have seen, I'm sure that you have seen a git config file, which is the project, uh, uh, well, the git ignore file, sorry, is the, the, the file which tells the, the repository which files it does, does need to control. It doesn't need to control. And there is also a file that not a lot of people know, that is git config. You can place that file in your home folder. So let's this is my home folder and I have a file which is my git config this is the file that I have shown you and uh, you can add things like okay I don't want to exclude git but uh, let's say that you work with PHP storm or sublime whatever you can add here uh, specific files that you want never to be commit like the, the sublime text project files or the PHP storm uh, project files so you don't need to specify in each project you don't need to say okay I'm not going to track sublime text files I'm not going to track uh, PHP storm files and in fact the correct way is that the project doesn't have that in the, the git ignore file and the, the most important thing is that your master branch or your main branch in Joomla the, when you create a repository, automatically it creates a master branch for you. So that's your master branch and you don't have to work on that. There's a lot of people committing in master branch. Uh, GitHub allows you to uh, change the name of that branch. In Joomla, for example, is staging, but uh, most of the repositories use master. So keep a staging clean or your master branch clean. You have to you need it to update your other branches so if you start adding things in the master branch uh, you won't be able to okay what is uh, when you want to uh, uh, merge a branch you won't be able to know what is uh, your work or what was already in the repository so uh, i will write the the magic commands that i, I want here uh, when you have branches, this is the git branch command. I have four branches here. You can see the master, which is the active branch. And there are uh, three more branches. So what I recommend you always is uh, before switching, let's think that I'm working in, in branch one. Okay, I, I'm working here. I'm committing a book fix for Joomla that a lot of people is waiting for. So I want to to match it or, or well, let's first explain uh, how you create that branch to start working. If you're in the master branch now, what I should do is uh, git pool origin master to update my master branch. I will uh, bring the remote repository changes in my local branch, so it will be up to date. And after that, I can create a new branch. Um, with branch, the standard command is git branch and the branch name that you want to give. So let's say branch four. And there is another way to do it, which is uh, faster. With the checkout command, you can uh, add the minus v uh, modifier modify and you say git branch five the first command will create let's remove them git branch. 
uh, I'm going to create another branch from my branch five, which is wrong, but I will do it. If I create another branch here, uh, sorry, branch six. If I create another branch and you see the, the branch list again, the branch has been added, but I'm not in that branch. This is also important that you know it when you, if you use git branch to create branches, you are not going to be in that uh, in that branch already. So what git checkout uh, help us is to uh, do git checkout minus v and the branch name. If I show again the, the branches, you have see you can see that I have created a new branch and I'm already there. So there, this. Uh, I will try to explain uh, the problem with uh, with this. Uh, when you create a branch, you inherit your parent the, the the branch when you are all that commits are inherited. Inherited. So if I have this is my uh, my commits of this branch, and if I create another branch from here, all these commits will be inside. So if I'm working in a patch for uh, something for Joomla and I create a pull request from for one branch from one of my branches uh, and then I forget to switch back to master and then create a, uh, another branch I will inherit those commits so you start will start see uh, odd things because oh this is my old pull request but those commits are here what happened and it's not easy well it's easy to fix it but for a Someone that no, doesn't know Git is not easy. So just use best practice and remember, always switch to master branch before creating another branch and everything will be okay. And remember that if you see uh, commits that you aren't working on, it's probably because uh, the parent branch was wrong. So that's about the master branch clean and updated, and always create another uh, thing that it's recommended. Uh, well, it's, if you work with GitHub, it's the only way, but always create a new branch for each feature or if path that you want to work in. So uh, the name of that branch is, I'm, I just use branch one, two, three, five, but it's important also that you uh, follow uh, some kind of your own rules. I, I, want, I will, uh, I use usually, uh, for example, if it's for com content, a patch for com content, I would use something like content categories. Uh, a descriptive name that will, when you see, I'm going to show you my uh, Joomla uh, branches. When you have a lot of branches, oh, what is that patch? Oh, and uh, I have cleaned it before, so uh, if you contribute a lot to a project, it's not easy to to start. When when I work in uh, another user uh, pull request, you, you can see here rather. So uh, let's say that I want to create a pull request against uh, something that Radek is working on, and uh, one of the things that GitHub and uh, allows you is that you collaborate in a branch, for example, in a Radex branch. He has a pull request, he has sent commits, and I say, okay, I think I can improve this, which I recommend you because I could uh, replace, uh, if it's a simple patch, you could directly, okay, I will send another pull request, fixing something that he forgot or that I think that is better, but that's not respectful. So uh, thinking contributors that Radex was it. Uh, maybe days working on that, and if I just get all his work and have, have one file, he will be probably angry with me because I <laughs> stole his work. So uh, when I work in another user branch, I use this kind of names. It's like Radek and the pull request uh, 6021. This is my convention, but whatever you do, do it uh, always. <coughs> Uh, other of the important things when you are we are talking about messing up with Git. So one of the important things is that when you do okay, 
I'm not sure what happened. Uh, I know that I cannot match my branch, but there's something wrong. I don't understand it. Um, there is a rule in, in Git, or well, a rule, this is uh, how it works. If you haven't uh, created a commit with your, without, with your changes, you can lose that information. So I'm going to do it. Um, master, master. If I'm in my master branch, uh, I want to. Uh, I'm going to merge branch one. Uh, this is an example. You don't have to, under to see to understand what I'm doing, but I'm merging one of my branches first. So this is how it got merged, and then. Uh, I'm going to, to try to merge another branch. OK, we have a conflict. And if I, get, I use git status, which is another of the commands that is cool that you use, you will see that uh, in both branches, it says, OK, uh, the file 5 it has been modified in the two branches. So there is a conflict. Uh, when you are in, in in this situation, what I recommend you is that you create, you can create a, a branch from when you are, uh, where you are. I could create a new branch for here. Uh, call it method, and I can. Okay, I will add that. Uh, this is to add all the files that I have modified, and and do something like uh, temp commit. There are my changes. I can no work on fixing that problem, but I'm sure that, that those uh, my my work is safe. Uh, Git has uh, tools that we will see later to allow us to to mer to fix conflicts. So, but the first thing that you have to do is to make a, a copy of your work. You use things like Git reset hard. Uh, Git reset hard is a, a uh, difficult command because it can it's most of the times that you lost something is using git reset so be careful and well one of the things that uh, a lot of people do us is that okay if there is a conflict I cannot push my changes on the remote server I saw in Google that you can use git push for so it, it works, but when you are collaborating with others, it, uh, that means I don't mind what is online. I will remove everything, and my version is the good version. So if I'm collaborating with Radek, and Radek tries to get the latest version, his history won't be the same than the online history. So I pass my problem to Radek. I'm happy, but he's not. <laughs> so. Uh, if there, if you cannot push, it's for a good reason. Fix it locally and then push. You don't need force. There are uh, cases where git push force makes sense. For example, you have a pull request. Uh, I really would recommend that you rebase your uh, your commits, but forget it for now. But when you have your own pull request and you are the only one contributing to that branch. It's your history. You can change the history. So uh, it's OK that you get push force. So that, that uh, uh, will uh, change the history of the, of the pull request. And this brings a problem in, in repositories where testers are needed, like in Joomla. You need two tests. And this is like cheating. Because uh, you could be working on something. Someone adds, oh, OK, I tested it, it works. And then I do a git push force and change everything. My, my, my code is not really tested. The, the old test is not valid. But don't tell anyone. <laughs> and of course, never do that in collaborative branches. So we are using the terminal. Uh, terminal is something that we all hate or have hated in the past, right? 
but there are good reasons to use terminal. I recommend you to start with the tool that you feel better with the, with it, more comfortable. So if you want to use a, a GUI, an, an interface for GUI, like Tower or whatever you use, it's okay, but you will end using terminal. So uh, there are things that you cannot uh, do with, with some of the software that is out there. The terminal works everywhere, works in a server, works in, in Macintosh. If you have learned uh, in the terminal, I can switch to your computer and help you to fix a conflict. I can do it in Windows if they pay me and, and in Linux. And there are things that you can only fix or you know, do in terminal and they are easier to do really in the terminal. So don't fear the terminal use it and, and it also helps you to isolate your issue from the GUI. Okay, I cannot merge, but the, the GUI is changing me. Most of the GUI uh, doesn't show you the real uh, uh, terminal error. So sometimes doing the same in the terminal just, okay, oh, it was this. <coughs> Now I will try to explain some of the useful commands. This is git checkout, you have seen it already, but checkout, checkout is like a Swiss army tool. And you can use git checkout to switch to a, another branch. For example, now I'm, I'm going to change to the master branch. Uh, you can also undo files, undo changes down to a file. So let's say that I'm in the that I'm here and I'm going to change one of my files. Oops. If I do git status, it will tell me, okay, th that file is modified. If you have a lot of files modified, and if your patch includes a lot of files, uh, it's uh, recommended also that you, before committing, you review, okay, this file is okay, it's okay, it's okay. Oh. I should have committed this file. So if you want to undo the changes to a file, for example, for this file, you can also do this. And it will, uh, that changes aren't any more there. My file is exactly the same version that the master branch. Uh, that's the git checkout command. And you can use checkout also to get a, a commit for a, a, a file version from another branch. Uh, let's say that I have been working on, on a patch six months ago. I know uh, a CMS uh, collaborator asked me to update it. And I said, OK, there is a lot of changes. I'm conflicting with everything. But I know that my changes are in this file, my patch mainly is in this file. You can create a new branch and say, okay, for my old branch, in this case, my branch, I'm going to pick this file. So I won't get all the commit uh, changes, just what the, that file is, the version of that file in that branch. And as we have seen, the, there is also a way to check out to a new branch, create a new branch and uh, switch to it. Sorry? Yeah, it's, it's, it's the same for everything. Ah, yeah. Uh, the git checkout uh, command, if you want to check out a file like we have seen before, Roland is saying that uh, you can use it that for folders or for, uh, you can use. Uh, 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 yeah, yeah, that's true. If you have a, a folder that, let's say that I have created a new view, but and I want to pick all the files in that inside that folder. If you use git checkout and the folder name, you will get all that folder. So you don't have to file by file. Say, okay, pick this file, pick this file. Thanks. Uh, another command that uh, a lot of people doesn't know is git fetch, and. Uh, what git fetch does is to uh, to download a copy of the remote repository. 
so you can uh, it's like if you have a github repository and you do git fetch that repository uh, that remote you can start uh, exploring the remote branches locally so let's say that i have a, a patch and when i try to match uh, the with the online version i got a conflict I can go GitHub and start searching, okay, what happened? This file was modified, this happened. But if you do git fetch, if you use git fetch, you will be able to do that locally. So let's use it, for example, in the, I will keep the CMS repo open. Uh, if I do uh, fetch upstream, which is the the main uh, Joomla repository, it will tell the server, okay, let's see what's there and download it for me. This is not changing my code. I'm not changing anything. I just have a copy of the remote repository. So it's telling me that George is working in the 3.5, or what, well, George, Ron, and all the maintainers. And I can do now, something like okay let's see what happened in upstream 3.5 and I'm, uh, if i do now git branch sorry for the mess you can see that i'm detached from it's a bit confusing in the screen uh, i'm i'm not in any branch i'm in a, a virtual branch which is a copy of the remote uh, 3.5 dev this is also useful if I want create, to create a new branch. Uh, let's say that I, uh, I want to create my local copy of that 3.5 uh, branch. So I, I can do something like now create a new branch from here. I mean an exact copy of the remote 3.5 uh, branch. So now I can do my 3.5 or usually you will use the same name. You could do git pull upstream 3.5 uh, branch or you could do something like this yeah, I already have it and now this is exactly what the uh, remote branch has so I can use uh, a, a, a GUI to see the, the changes this is a Linux tool but any of your tools I can see okay someone is working in ISIS this is the, the commit that is conflicting with me, is not anything. <coughs> uh, it will create your uh, local copy. It will include all the remote branches. So uh, if it's a good project, it won't have a lot of branches, but you have to think that your folder will, grow, will, will be bigger because there is a much more information there. And it allows you to review the changes. Uh, when you have rebase, re uh, uh, most of the times with Git, what we want to do is to take this and put it, uh, take this branch and put the content in the master or my work from here to there. This is uh, mostly what we want to do, move things from one side to another. So um, there are two ways to, uh, for example, I want to merge my branch into but the master, the remote master branch, into my local copy of of uh, of Joomla, for example, I could do git pull upstream. I'm going to match to update my 3.5 branch. I could do this, which means, okay, from the upstream server, get the latest changes done in the 3.5 dev. It will tell me that there is nothing new because it's a clean branch. But uh, what I want you to understand is that Git pull, it uh, downloads all the changes from the uh, remote repository and then runs automatically Git merge. So uh, if we are, uh, see the, the stack of commits again, Let's see that. Uh, let's say that we have uh, a list of commits, which is our local commits history, and this is the remote local history. Uh, if you use git pull, what it does is try to merge. Each commit 
has a different date. Uh, it was uh, someone submit that commit uh, three weeks ago. So you can see if you match the remote server with git pool or git master or upstream 3.5, uh, you will get all your changes met, uh, met, mixed. So if someone did it three weeks ago, those changes will be below your uh, latest commits. But maybe they are mixed with your changes. So what git rebase allows us is to put just uh, compare both stacks of commits and say, okay, this is the red, it's in both branches, this is the blue, it's in both branches, this is not new for this branch, and when it finds something new that is uh, specific of your patch, it will put it on top. It will change the date of that commit and say, okay, this is your work, I will put it on top. The next, okay, this is yours, and from that, uh, your, your code will be on top. It's easy to see where it has been used or not. If I'm going to master again, uh, if you see those in the in the left side of, the, let's use the other terminal. If you see these changes, this means that someone merged. There was someone working in a, a parallel branch, and at some point they got merged. So you can see that they were evolving separately and they got merged. Uh, what Rebase helped us to, to do is to not have that kind of, you always have a linear history where new commits are on top and you won't see that separation. So I will try to do it here. Branch eight. Uh, I'm going to match another branch, let's say branch three. Oh no, I'm going to create changes here. Or I have branches prepared, so I can uh, uh, to explain you the problem. So let's back to master. Okay, that includes. Uh, I'm going to reset to this commit to show you how it works. This is my history, it's linear, so I don't have things messed. And if I do something like match branch one, it, if you see this message, it means that it go, it's going to create a, a match commit. So you have two independent uh, workflows or uh, Git threads and they are going to be merged. Okay, I will match it. And now my history is like that. What should I do for this? With oh, how rebase will do that for us? If I again, uh, if I go back to that point. Okay, I'm here again. Now I'm working on the branch one. Here, I'm going to create a copy. And here, and what I want to do is uh, before creating a pull request, for example, it's a good uh, practice. I can do rebase uh, uh, master, for example. Yeah, and what I'm saying is, oh, okay, you start comparing both branches and put my changes on top of the master branch. Okay, I created it from master, so it's not master branch. <coughs> ah, okay, so it's here. Oh, the master branch has the changes already. <coughs> no, it's, it's not there. So if I create the, if I do the, the master comparison, it's up to date. I don't know what it's saying, up to date. Ah, because the, the commits are ordered in the right way. So I can switch to master. 
imagine that someone create uh, changed one file in master and did something like change three dot two. I'm going to add a uh, commit in in the master branch, which is not right, but. Okay, now my branch has a new commit on top. Someone, uh, someone else's uh, branch was merged. And now what happens when my old branch one, uh, when I want to merge my branch one branch? Uh, if I run git release master, what it will do? Uh, okay, I have seen that those commits are different and not uh, in the same order than in the master branch. So now my history, I'm going to go back and show you the history of Bob. I will explain Reflog later, but for now it's a uh, branch one, this command. If I do a merge, the history will be merged, but uh, if I do the uh, rebase, master again, you can see the difference between both. My, my latest commit is put on top of the, of the stack of commits, so it's a, a good reason to use uh, git fetch and git rebase. Uh, instead of git pool origin master or git pool upstream master. You can explore things locally and uh, when you merge both things, they are uh, mixed properly. I'm sure this is not clear enough. It's not my bad day, my bad day. So git rebase will compare your current branch with the branch that you are comparing. You can use git rebase uh, against a remote branch so let's say that i want to rebase my patch branch against the upstream dash uh, master or staging uh, you can solve the the well, another thing that git uh, merge ha does differently is that when you use merge it gets all the changes of all the files and merges it in the active branch. If you have conflicts, it will show you which files are conflicting, but you won't, you won't know which commit is conflicting with yours. And, and you cannot deal, you have to deal with all the problems or all the conflicts together. If you use rebase, each time that is checking that if this commit is new and it's trying to add it on top, to put it on top, if he finds uh, a conflict in this commit, it will only show you that conflict. So, okay, I will fix the conflict with this commit, then next commit, then next commit, and it's a lot of easier. It's a lot easy, a lot of easier to, to fix things. So, uh, if you work with git fetch and git rebase, uh, uh, you will be you will be able to fix your conflict in a easier way. Uh, as I have told you, the merge respects the dates and the rebase updates them. Because if my uh, commits are merged today, the, maybe it's not uh, right, but they got merged in the CMS repository today. So what we want is that those changes are shown, uh, are shown with today's date. And this is an example that is messed there, but it is uh, against a remote branch. I'm doing a rebase against the upstream master branch. Again, all the commands cannot be run everywhere. So if you are uh, collaborating with Radek again, uh, <laughs> I only collaborate with him. So if I, if I do rebase, if you are in a collaborative branch, what happens if uh, I do, let's say, we are working on that branch and the master branch is changing. So I, I say, okay, I will rebase against the master branch. 
but uh, I'm changing the our branch history. So he will be forced to download again a clean copy of the repository because I have changed the, the history. So if you are working on a collaborative branch, never do a rebase until the big patch is merged. So uh, you can merge uh, master, merge master branch, merge master, master branch is not important when you are collaborating with others. What you want is that all the files have the, the right version. And when your pull request is going to be merged, someone will do the rebase or it should. But if I change the history, it will affect others in a collaborative branch. Uh, this is the another useful command. This is cherry pick. It means that I'm going to, uh, as I told you before, uh, I have been working on something six months ago, and I want to get uh, one commit from that branch. And I don't want all the commits there, but I'm sure that my changes were in a specific commit, which is a good reason to also squash your commits. We will explain it later. But if you have all your changes in a in a commit, uh, doing this, what Git Cherry Picks does is to get exactly that commit and put it in your branch. You will put it on top, and you will see the uh, same exact commit message on top of your branch. Uh, you can also get those changes of that commit, but do not uh, create a commit in your local branch. I will, I will try to do it. So here we are. This is the master branch. And now I'm going to see if I have uh, another commit in the branch too. Okay, the, it, this is this commit. This is the, hash, the the left side is the hash, which is the like we say the color of that commit in your uh, stack of commit your history. So if I know back to master <coughs> and I do it cherry pick that commit, it has added that commit on top of my commit. I, I'm going to undo it and do it uh, with the end modifier. Sorry. Let's see the difference. You can see that it has uh, uh, got the changes from that commit, but I don't have a commit on top. So the minus end modifier what does is the to okay I'm going to get dot, dot dot commit changes those commit changes but I'm not going to match or to create a commit in my branch. So. Okay. Another of the commits. <laughs> of the commands Git includes <coughs> is Git revert. When we think in, in revert, it's like, okay, let's undo it. But revert it doesn't work like that. What revert does is that I'm not collaborating with Radek anymore, but I'm collaborating with Saura. Thank you. I'm collaborating with Saura now. And uh, let's say that. Uh, I, uh, I broke something, and so that detects that I broke something, and I say, okay, I'm going to remove that commit. If we are lucky, he will detect it the next day, because he's a good developer, and he will say, okay, I can remove that commit. You can, uh, let's say, delete it, and and uh, update the remote repository with a push force. For example, it can it push force. It could be done, remote it complete, completely. <laughs> But what happens if another dev that is collaborating with Saurabh and me has uh, the same copy of the repository? We have changed it. If you delete that commit, uh, you have broken his history. So uh, what git revert does is uh, you have a commit. This was for two, two days ago. And I want to revert it. What it does, it does is to add a new commit on top. It's like, OK, I'm undoing it but I'm doing it in the right way, which is sending a new commit 
and then when another developer updates his branch, it will be on, on uh, the commit will be uh, applied, but his history will be right. It's like uh, thinking it like uh, if you have invoices, uh, it's like a refund of, of one invoice. Okay. You can also use the minus n modifier. So if you want to revert, if Shaura wants to revert my changes or uh, one of my commits, he can do it with the minus n uh, modifier. So let's say that Shaura says, okay, I'm going to revert, but not completely the changes. So I will revert it and then change something there and create a new commit. <coughs> Uh, one of the cool things that the, it is going to help us is uh, if you break something, there is a command that uh, not a lot of people know, so this is git reflog. I'm going to show you. This is git reflog, and uh, the left side of the, uh, you have, here is the, the hash of the commit, which means uh, this is where I have been today. Uh, first, I did a commit in change, uh, then I check out uh, branch one, then I rebase it. So, for example, it's easier with um, branch eight, for example. This is what I told you before, that it's important that you commit things for things like this one. So let's say that, okay, there is conflict here. I'm going to change this file. And I say, okay, that's, that may be wrong, but let's commit it. And uh, if I have, uh, if I, I haven't committed, and I uh, do something like git reset, I will lose that changes. But now I have committed, so if I go to reset to a previous state of my branch, let's say I have removed the O commit on top. If you see, it, it's not anymore. So I have lost my work, but git reflog will help us. Here it is. This is git commit. It is, okay, two days ago you were in our commit, and it, it was O. What happens if I do now? Something like git reset hard and the commit. My commit is back. Because what uh, uh, reflog does is exactly in that hash, it will restore your your status. So it's cool. So you can reverse in any situation. If you have sent a commit, you can undo it. Uh, uh, git reflog is not storing. Uh, uh, you don't, cannot go to two, two months ago, but uh, like one, I think by default is like one week, two weeks. So you have 15 days to say, okay, I was working on that. Or uh, it's also useful if you don't remember which branch were you working in, because you oh with the flow I was there. Yeah, but that's uh, yeah. Uh, Roland is saying that if if I do a, a hard reset to a, a commit on uh, two days ago, I will lose my current uh, changes, and that's true. But uh, uh, we are not going to use it to restore something. We are so we are going to use it to see what I changed there in another branch, for example. And okay, okay, that are my changes, and then I can match them into another branch. So it's not like a backup that I can, okay, let's see it, let's get it and put it in my master branch. It's, I'm going to go there, recover what I was, the, uh, my status when I was there, and see, okay, then I can pick some files and get them. Uh, exactly. You go back, I have done it now, and do go back to the history, to your current status. Yeah, I back to the history. <laughs> And you can use uh, cherry pick, for example, if you want to ch only get the changes of that branch and respect your current history. <coughs> uh, 
Okay, uh, I'm not sure how my uh, rewind the time. Uh, well, it's done. Uh, there is a lot of uh, more things to learn. I wanted to show the. I think we have time. Enough time. Let's say that we are working. I wanted to uh, explain you uh, Git Squash, how Git Squash works, because it's something that uh, some people has asked me to do. So let's say that I'm a master, and I'm going to uh, create another branch, last branch. And then I'm going to start changing files. OK, so there. Uh, change one. Now I will commit that change. change. Now I'm going to change another file. Let's say that my patch includes a lot of commits. This is what I call a, a commit uh, hunter. It means that I will change one line and create a commit. It's not a good practice, but Yeah, another change, and finally another another commit. I'm going to change it. Oh. Okay, if I have checked my history, I can see that uh, master branch Git shows you which. Uh, which master, which branch is in each hash? So those three commits are on top, but I don't want. Uh, let's say that I have a, uh, sent a commit like uh, add a JavaScript file, and then I'll change here, change uh, code style in in here, change code style in here. What uh, we want to do is to rebase, and if you use the rebase minus I minus E A um, oh, I. Uh, and you specify the master branch. Uh, this is a minus I means I I interactive way. So I can say you can see here the options it gives me. So I, I let's say I want to the default option is to pick. So it's going to pick this commit, then the next commit, and then the next commit. But no, I don't want to. To pick this commit, I will use the error from reward. It means that I'm going to change the commit message, and then in that I will use the s. It, that's for, to start to squash the commit. So if I do this, in the next step, what is going to ask me is, okay, you told me that you want to reward the, that commit. What should we use? And now we are creating a cool commit and uh, new feature for George. And another of the cool things that Git does is uh, it's able to show you uh, in the Git description, in the commit description, uh, it will show you that it contained three commits. This is the default message. You can change it, of course, but I think this is a cool way. And then uh, it's showing that this is the first commit, this is the second commit, and it's like an explanation of what happened here. When you are collaborating with others, it's something good to have. And I, if I do again a git log, you can see that I only have one commit on top, and it's like a mix of uh, the other three commits with a new cool message. And now we, I'm ready to push that changes to Joomla CMS repository. So that's done. Do you have any questions? <laughs>